Hello, I'm back. Penny here with an answer to a question from a viewer. And I said I would make a video about it instead of answering it in the comments. Welcome back. Today I'm wearing my wife's Date Just 41 blue dial, fluted Jubilee. And I have confiscated this watch, guys. She's about to wear it for two months straight. So I think at the end of September, she's going to wear it for two months straight. Now, my record of wearing a watch without changing it is two and a half months. So we'll see if she could come close or beat me, probably, because she doesn't get bored. Um, but she's going to celebrate her birthday with the birthday watch that came early and wear it for two months straight. So I got in there and sort of stole it a little so I can wear it until then. Well, I'm actually only wearing it for a week and then I'm switching to the AP Royal Oak is that was a watch that celebrates my promotion. And uh, now that I'm gonna be back in action in person, I decided to wear the AP for a month. So that's what our rotation is looking like. But I wanna jump into this question, answering this question, which is basically why Rolex, right? Uh, why Rolex? Why do I collect only Rolex or mostly Rolex? This is uh, what a viewer asked. I'm sorry, I don't rem remember your name. I'd have to go back and find which video you asked that question on. I think it was, yeah, I don't even remember which video, but it was a, it was recently. And so I want to take some time to answer that question. I wrote out some answers. I'm having my Saturday morning coffee. Here, let's put this beautiful date chest here. By the way, guys, I'm enamored with this. I mean, I've been wearing the Milgauss for the last couple of weeks. And to switch the Milgauss out and put this beauty on, this very sleek and slender profile of the date chest, oh my gosh, it's like night and day. And I didn't find the Milgauss to be too chunky when I was wearing it. It's fine because you adapt. However, when you put this on after, this is just perfect, guys. I want a freaking date chest myself. But it's the same damn household penny. You can wear this one. <laughs> you can wear this one when she's not wearing it. Um, I don't know. I really regret not buying that Wimbledon last year. Uh, anyway, I digress. Let's hop into the topic. Okay. Why do I collect only Rolex or mostly Rolex watches? Okay. Well, I, got out, I wrote out some answers, about 10 answers. So let's go through them. First off, I am a brand person. You know, um, I am not ashamed to say, but I attach to brands. Like, I, it's just unconscious, unconscious. And, you know, what happens is, like, let's say um, tortillas. You know, you, I love tacos. I always get Mission tortillas. That's kind of like the main brand in the U.S. anyway. You get me some other tortillas. Uh, I will, I will, con in my head, I will feel like they don't taste the same or the texture is different. Toilet paper. Oh my gosh. Don't come in this house with some whack toilet paper, like some angel soft. I'm a Charmin girl, you know, and, and that's the toilet paper I want. I don't want these other, but they feel different, you know? So I have always been in my life, a brand person. And my wife says, you're a brand snob. You don't want the budget stuff. Well, you, you know, I just, I just like what I like and I stay the course with whatever has been working. And so I think that extends to watch collecting and why I've gone so, you know, um, deep into Rolex or not even deep, but why I continue to just buy Rolex is number one is I'm basically a brand person, you know, that that I just get my brand. If, if a brand works for me, I'm pretty brand loyal, you know, um, and I know that's all marketing, but it is it, it is what it is. It's how I operate. So number two. I like sameness and consistency. So kind of related to being a brand person, you know, tacos are my favorite food. Guys, I could eat tacos every day for three or four months straight. I don't even care. You know, you can get a lot of variety in tacos. You can have potato and beans tacos, you know, meat tacos. Um, you can really get creative, but it could be the same taco, you know, style. Uh, and I could eat those. Taquitos. I could eat taquitos for ev every day for months and months on end. I'm just, I just don't get bored with repetition. So sameness is, you know, something like consistency, sameness. If something has some heritage, even better, I'll just stay with it. Like I'm easy in that way and I'm not ashamed to admit it. Your girl is easy, guys. Your girl is easy. <laughs> and I just stay the course with what I like 
and the sameness and the repetition, they don't bore me. I'm not an easily bored person. I entertain myself for crying out loud, talking to this to this video. You know, it's a Saturday morning. I'm 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 entertaining myself. So I really don't get bored easily at all. Black coffee on deck. I need to do a uh, update on my watches and wellness series. It's been, you know, a, a short aside on that. I've stayed the same, I've maintained, and I'm slowly trying to still chip away at weight loss. But um, but it but the month of August has been uh just just average. So but I'm still fasting and I'm still well more on that later. But drinking the black coffee because no cream, no sugar, no calories, okay? Um, number three, so number two was I just like sameness and repetition. It doesn't bother me. Number three, I actually love the designs. This is why I got the catalog out. Rolex watches, you know, okay, look at it, it this way. You got the oyster case. They're all oyster perpetual cases. That's their, that is their brand core. This is kind of like AP with the Royal Oak. It's, it's at the core of their brand. And I just operate that way as an individual. But for, fortunately, I like the oyster case. I like the style. I like the aesthetics. I genuinely do. And I know that real watch enthusiasts, real watch enthusiasts, you know, I don't even know how I classify myself. I love watches. I'm a Rolex lover and I love watches. But there are guys in this hobby that really get into the independence and really like, you know, eclectic styles. Um, that's not me. I feel like my personality and who how I represent in the world is eclectic enough for me. Um, and I don't necessarily need the watches to do that. What I like is kind of the same style, but I like the style. I, you know, with the Rolex, you just change the bezel and there you go. It's a little bit of difference. You know, you get precious metal, you change the metal, a little bit of difference, but I don't get bored with this style and I really enjoy it. And one of the things I'm just going to show you, one of the things I love is there are nice details, even with this sameness and this repetition and this, you know, so-called boring style, the fluted bezel guys, I can just chill and, and look at this. This, this really, truly uh, works for me. I can really and truly enjoy it. And I can also really and truly enjoy things like the white gold surrounds and how they sparkle and pop the sunburst blue dial. I mean, it may not seem exciting to some of, of some folks who are into really eclectic and quirky watches, but for me, I actually like the design language. There's something in this that really works for me. Related to that, I will say I like the ruggedness of it. I love the fact that I don't have to worry. I mean, this is a ten. This is literally a ten thousand dollar watch, you know. And I'm I'm just wearing it, playing with the dogs, and doing whatever. But. I'm not worried about it. You know, I, I don't have to be concerned that I'm going to break this thing. I just don't. You know, I'm more likely to lose it or, you know, I don't know. But I'm not worried about hurting it. And so that is that is huge, guys. The fact that I love the design language and it can go the distance. Now, I'm not some like sumo wrestler or something, you know, some skydiver or something really extreme. I'm just living your average life. But this can go through the paces with us. Um, all of them can. And we really don't have to worry about it. I don't think we have any watches that we have to worry about because we're not into vintage yet. And we're not um, into, we don't have dress watches. Uh, so I don't think we have any watches that we really have to worry about, but we mostly have Rolex and we don't have to worry about these at all. So I love the design language. That was number three. And I'm not worried about harming the watch. Number four, value retention, VR. Yep, not virtual reality, but value retention. Guys, why is this a dirty term in the watch community where it's like, if you care about watch re value retention, then you're in it for the wrong reasons? I don't have any problem with that. That's huge to me. You know, I'm still a middle class person at the end of the day. And knowing that, I, and I lose money every time I sell a watch. I'm even losing on the Speedmaster guys a little bit that I'm that I'm selling, even though I got it at a great price. It's just that most of the brands, Tudor, my Black Bay 58, 
for crying out loud, those things are soft. I enjoyed the watch for the two years that I had it, but it does not feel good to sell it when you decide to move on and then take a big loss. Like that just hurts. And it doesn't happen very much with Rolex, though I have lost money on, on Rolex before, but now going forward, I probably won't if I ever sell, which I hope I don't because again, I'm, 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 I'm into the brand and I have a keeper's mentality, more or less. But I don't mind the value retention. I enjoy it. And psychologically, it does increase my pleasure and my enjoyment of the brand knowing that something I have on my wrist is either A, going up or B, retaining its value. That just factors into the enjoyment. It just does for me. And it's less enjoyable when I know it's just, you know, falling through the, the floor and the, you know, the price, if I sell it, I'm going to lose money. It's like, I'm not a gambler. I really don't enjoy casinos, not even casually. If I lose one penny in the slot machine, guys, that's one penny too much. <laughs> a play on the name. If I lose one penny, that's one penny too much. I really don't like it. It's not fun to me. I'd rather spend my money and have something than feel like I'm losing it, right? So value retention is a big thing to me. It increases the enjoyment. It's all good. I like it. Number five, um, ticking boxes, checking boxes did not work for me. I tried to start out with brand diversity, have an IWC, have a tutor. I wanted a Zenith. I still like Zenith. You know, I wanted to kind of hit the icons of most brands because, again, I'm still pretty boring and classic. Um, a Santos, you know, I wanted to get an array of watches, kind of the best representatives from each brand. And I started going down that road, guys, and I didn't like them as much as Rolex. I didn't like them as much as my BLNR, as my Explorer 2. I just, you know, I tried that, ro that route and it did not work. So ticking boxes, if you listen to my lessons I learned about watch collecting, that just doesn't work for me. You got to go with what you like. And I like Rolex. <laughs> Number six, um, Rolex as an aspirational object works for me. So what I mean by that is that, you know, the, the, the Rolex has such a huge part of the market share for a reason. It's one of the most recognizable brands in the world. And if you're in a certain class point, you know, I think Rolex has always probably symbolized, symbolized a certain status and a certain achievement. And I got to a point in my age, I mean, I'm middle-aged and I've done some things in this life. And I got to a point where I was like, damn, let me celebrate, <laughs> you know? And celebrating those accomplishments and thinking about it, you know, every little milestone now is like, you get a Rolex, you get a Rolex. Because it really works in that way psychologically to me that, you know, it's something that we can aspire to because it looms so large and it works well for celebrating accomplishments. And there is a sort of, you know, again, psychological attachment to the status in my head, not, you know, in terms of performance, not in terms of telling people, because I never like to draw attention to my watch. Um, I, I don't talk to, most people in my life don't have watches and are not watch collectors. I don't want them knowing I have a Rolex on my wrist. I feel like that's obnoxious, but it's just pleasure for me to know that I have gotten to this place where we can do this, you know? So that's kind of what I'm trying to say about number six is it works as, you know, uh, something to aspire to and, it, it just hits them. And I guess other brands could do that for sure too. Um, but Rolex just is like this big symbol in that way. Number seven, I like the idea of collecting mostly one brand. And I'm not even saying like, I mostly have modern Rolexes with the exception of the Explorer 2, uh, which is kind of neo vintage now. Um, I'm not saying that what I have now and collecting modern watches is gonna be my style forever. But I like the idea of narrowing it down. So let me give you another example. I kind of just have the collector's gene and gene in general. I collect fragrances. Your girl always smells good. And I've been into those for a really long time, probably fragrances for like 10 years. And um, I got my set and eventually, you know, I was all over the place with fragrances. Eventually I narrowed it down to what I really like, you know, about, oh, maybe 10 or 15 fragrances that I can just constantly have in rotation. I started to refine it is what I'm saying. And, 
And, and I also collect Lego. Your girl loves some Lego and video games. And I always decided that I would have a genre or a theme in that, you know, like with video games, I like RPGs, um, pretty much, and simulation games. RPGs and simulation games are my jam. And I kind of narrow the field that way because otherwise, you know, it's all over the place. Like it's a lot more time and money involved. And with Lego, if you buy every Lego set that comes out that is cool, you will go broke. I mean, not as quickly as buying watches, but there's so much stuff in the Lego universe. You got Lego Harry Potter. Uh, you got Lego Star Wars. Oh my goodness. If I was a Star Wars fan and I collected Lego Star Wars, that would be fine, but probably not collecting anything else. So in our household, we have a theme for Lego collecting. Empress is into it also. We... um basically collect city stuff because we have this huge Lego city and we do build it with our, our, our nieces and nephews and other kids in our lives. And we had to, I had to like limit it down to whatever fits in the city, you know, realistically is what we can collect. Because if we just collect all these sets that are like display sets, you know, our whole house would just be cluttered with these Lego, you know, Lego sets. Every time something comes out, it's, you know, it's too much to control. Um, I also collect the Speed Champions line. So I do, I'm into cars. I love the car side of Legos, uh, Lego and, and the city stuff. And that's it. There's too many other themes to really get into. So for watches, I love the idea of really limiting my um, myself by focusing on a brand or a theme. Now I'm not all the way there yet. And I do think in my collection, I'll have to have one or two slots that are not Rolex just to mix it up and appreciate some other things. But for the most part, I really love the idea of just sticking with one brand. It limits things, it, it, it makes sense to me, and I'm a rule-based person. Give me, you know, I, I like to impose uh, rules on myself, and that's a rule that, that works for me. I like just sticking with, you know, one theme or brand. Number eight is is really like an outlier, and that is I do like AP. I, I so I, I I I would love to own more Audemars Piguet, more Royal Oak specifically, but I don't see myself wanting as many of those as I do Rolex. Like if I could have an ideal collection, I would probably have two or three uh, Royal Oaks, and then the rest would be Rolex. So the percentage or the ratio of of AP to Rolex, I think, is gonna be more limited. In terms of my taste, I like the design, but I, there's not that many um, Royal Oaks that I like. And in terms of money and, and you know upstart costs, like again, because I don't really want to sell my watches and roll them into stuff, I have to just be patient and I'm not a patient person. So by the time I save 30,000 for the next AP, that's like three sports Rolexes, which I can get, you know, presumably, or two, you know, really good Rolexes. And so it's just uh, a game of, of, you know, patience. And I really haven't developed that engine yet, but I think when I have enough Rolex, when I have a couple more Rolexes that, you know, to the point where I'm like, I have the perfect Rolex collection for me, there's two or three more out there that I'm like, that's, that's it for me, you know, in terms of like not having to feel like I'm compulsively buying them. And then, then I can just save for the long haul and maybe hopefully go for AP. Um, that that's the plan. So you know the other model or the other brands that are out there. I really like Vacheron. I want a dress piece, um, you know. But again, um, I like the Historiques American uh, man. I'm sorry, the dogs barking. They just do this, guys. We know that you're gonna have a soundtrack of barking dogs in the background because they hate that I'm having fun without them. <laughs> so, um, but, but I would love a dress watch, but again, it's the same thing is that I probably need to get my fill of Rolex before I move on to, to really commit to that. And then, you know, we'll see, or I will also leave it open that, you know, I will change my taste over time. And that right now this is what it is, but maybe in 10 years, maybe in 15 years, I will have a different take and a different outlook. Who knows? I can only say what I'm, what I'm into right now. And it's, it's this, um, number next, I think it's number nine. I have the relationships with ADs 
And that does intensify the pace of collecting and what I'm going for in a given moment. If I didn't have the relationships with ADs, it might make me go more into Neo Vintage or probably not other brands, but maybe other brands. Maybe I'll explore them a little more and it wouldn't feel like I have to get what I can get now. Um, and that part does suck a little bit, but I feel like, hey, as long as I have the relationships, I'm going to keep, you know, maybe going after what I want in Rolex, which, by the way, is probably another day chest. Um, I, I don't know if I want the 36 or if I want another 41, because as much as I was hating on the 41, guys, um, it's wonderful. And um, so another day chest, you know, the, the LV sub, you know, I want the Kermit, um, a Pepsi, and then maybe, hopefully, somehow, a Daytona, even if it's pre-owned, I don't know. Um, but that's kind of it in my universe. Empress wants a bluesy. So, you know, there's maybe four more pieces, four or five. I said, what did I say? Two to three? I don't know, guys. That sounds crazy to me that I would buy four or five more of these damn things. But um, then, you know, uh, maybe I'll focus on other things. But while I have these relationships, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to make the most of them. So having those relationships with the ADs does influence um, this a little bit, but I, again, all these other reasons are, are the reasons why I'm into it. Finally, number 10, um, I, I'm just happy with the, with Ro like it, like it puts a smile on my face when I'm wearing it. I could be having a crap day. I was wearing the Milgauss the last couple weeks and you know, the, the, the GV glass and even with the polished center leaks, I, 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 I like them. I like dressy things, fancy things. You know, I, I would just take a moment and look at it. That seconds hand, the lightning bolt seconds hand, actually watching it go around the dial, you know, I could just take those breaks and those moments of glancing at it and enjoying it and, you know, um, winding it and, and, and checking it for accuracy. I just, it just makes me happy, you know, and, and at the end of the day, that's what we're, you know, you hope, you hope that there's more enjoyment versus stress, um, compared to stress or, you know, distaste in the hobby. And for me, the enjoyment is high with Rolex. They're that that it's not only all these other reasons I mentioned, I just actually enjoy it from a pleasure standpoint. And it puts a smile on my face. It's like cloak fragrances. When I got into cologne and, and fragrances, I would always say it's like an instant attitude boost. You know, you could wake up and it's snowing. And guys, I hate freaking New England weather. I'll be in the snow, you know, two feet of snow, get out there and shovel and then drag yourself to work. I was, oh, I hate that shit. <laughs> I hate weather. I hate bad weather. And I noticed that if I get got dressed nicely, dressed up as nicely as I can, put on a nice fragrance, it would just boost my attitude and my mood for the day. And this is now like a part of it, you know, wearing the white, white watch in a given moment will... Uh, change my disposition and my mood and, and put me, you know, give me that little lift that I need for the day and for a moment. And that goes a long way in life is having the right attitude and the right, you know, uh, mental outlook and emotional outlook can, can really open doors. So I love uh, that aspect of it. So these are all my reasons, guys. I mean, sometimes I, I get a lot of love in the comments. People who watch my channel, you know, genuinely like what I have to say, and they're very supportive. But occasionally I get the people that are like, you need to explore other brands. Why are you stuck in Rolex? You know what? I like what I like. And and this is it. And I don't feel the pressure, social pressure, to uh, to uh, disavow this this love as a, as a Rolex lover. Um, or, you know, try something else right now. I have tried something else. I do see other watches. I do think about them, but this is what I keep kind of coming home to. And, um, it's still kind of middle of the road Rolexes too. We haven't even gotten a little bit further down in terms of the, the metal, precious metals. So right now this is a mainstay. It, it works for me. Uh, what do you think? Do you have themes in your collecting? You know, do you like one brand? Do you like to play the field, so to speak? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Peace.